I think today I am actually gonna pull the trigger and induce her. And then there were four. Not you! Not good. Are up. I'm gonna move them around a bit just to keep them moving, get the circulation going. The Preg Talks Mama, her pee smells vile. It smells so bad. So I do forget about that. That's what Preg Talks smells like. I'm, this one's looking a little better today. Good, girl. good morning I didn't say good morning to you guys it is Wednesday this is day one of Carissa's holidays so it is just me and you and chores for the next Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday five days these use that are down um, I am gonna keep I'm gonna keep trying to get them up uh, every few hours every day I'm gonna keep treating them most of these treatments looks like they're like three day on everybody's protocols it looks like three days or three to five days so we are gonna keep this going as soon as I can't get these use up I'm gonna pull the trigger and I'm actually gonna induce them I'm gonna get those lambs out they will probably not survive uh, they're too early we're uh, where are we now we're 11 days out from due date and that's only if they were due the first day which they probably weren't so it's one of the things we either save mom or save the lambs and if a ewe is down that long it's gross i don't like that i don't like keeping a, a ewe on like on the ground for that long so i would rather uh induce her it will take f around 50 hours it'll take two days two more days of laying down so that's um i think that's the decision making process i'm gonna make i'm just gonna keep them keep at it keep treating them get them on their feet get them moving around a few times a day even even if it's only five or 10 laps around that pen. From there, we will, we'll make the call if I cannot, for the life of me, get them up. I'm gonna do chores here, and then I wanna do a deep dive on the history of these two U's. I actually took a picture of their tags. So um, I, I started to do it last night, and my computer updated. <laughs> and I'm like, it was dark, it was getting dark. I'm like, I'm out of here. So I'm gonna do that today, and I'm also gonna grab my wool that Charlie sheared here a few weeks ago and take that to Blythe to get washed. Guess who I found? I found mama number four. And I think with her problems, she, so she was hard to get up, really weak in her back end, but I actually think she's got a sore leg. But it's nice to have her in this pen because I can treat her, I can catch her easier. She's not gonna get run into and knocked over. And so yeah, we found her. And then there were four. Okay, chores are done and I've been sitting here going through 
these two U's and my data. So I scan the U's that are down with PregTox. This one is the 3.8, this is the 2.9. My theory, when I went through all the U's that I had marked as going down with PregTox, I went through and tried to figure out if there was something the same between all of them. And the one thing I noticed is most of them had missed one or more breeding periods. So a misconception, meaning they're getting fed that flush ration two weeks before they get bred, they get bred for either 21 days or 34 days if it's a natural breed. And then they get fed that same ration for another four weeks after that for that placenta development period. So that's quite a few weeks in a row. If they end up scanning open, which means they're not pregnant when Rebecca comes uh, six weeks later, then they immediately get put into the next breeding group if, if they've only missed once. So I give them a second chance and then they go through that whole thing again. That's been kind of my theory just based on it's the one thing I could really see between the groups. The one that has the levels of 3.8, she's actually missed twice in her life. Once in 2016, once in 2018. She hasn't missed a breeding period since then. She's had 15 lambs. Uh, the other you, the one that's a 2.9, the one that's just over the clinical, has um, she has never missed a breeding period. So she has caught every single time. So it kind of jives. She is a bit older again. Uh, she, I think, is a year younger than this mama. So she has lambed every single time. So she's lambed five times. She's given me 10 lambs. So I'm actually just gonna go, uh, my friend Lindsay's like, are they related? I'm like, ooh, good question. So the one thing about keeping, keeping uh, record keeping is in the, at the time, I don't do a lot with the data, but eventually when you run into issues, which you will if you have sheep, well, if, I guess if you're me and you have sheep, then um, it, can become a, it can become an issue. Okay, okay, it's looking like they're not related, but there's definitely some genetics that are comparable. So uh, both have those steel genetics in them. I'm not, say, I'm not saying that that's why they have it, because... I do, I do feel like preg tox, preg tox is a management thing. So I don't, I don't blame the genetics on this necessarily, unless I could see that it was a daughter or a granddaughter. Um, and it doesn't look like they're related. So just some interesting data. I am glad I keep this stuff. Well, this makes me happy. I ran across the road and got some hay that I was feeding the lambs to bring it over for these ladies. They weren't eating the, they're not eating the TMR and they're barely eating the pellets, so I gave them some hay and they're nibbling away. There's something about hay. It was the same with Mama, Mama Red here. Um, it just gets them nibbling on something and it helps their rumen and it just stimulates everything. So we're gonna go in for a quick bite. I'm gonna get these up after lunch, um, but I also have to get my wool up to Blythe, so it's just nice to see these guys eating. Yay! Point nine got up on her own. 
I really should stop calling them by their ketone levels. 2.9, 2.8. 2.8 needs assistance. Mama Red, can you move along? There you go. Thank you. Your turn. Yeah, that's it. Yep. I'll help your back end. That's it. Good girl. Girl, can we do some walking? Good. Ian. Come. Have some water. Need that water, yeah. Good girl. This is the first time I've seen her drink, and she was eating hay earlier, so that's all good. That's one, two, three, yay, four, and five. Good girl. I'm getting dizzy. Can you do the rest on your own now? Good girl. While I was on the road, I thought I would go to Brussels and pick up all my lambing supplies. The only thing I wasn't sure of was how much colostrum I have. I have a couple bags here. Oh, not much. Okay. Two more bags here. So I need more of that. Hopefully I have time next week to get all this stuff ready when I'm kind of more in the space of it. Um, yeah, so basically, OB gloves, gloves to go over my OB gloves, a bunch of RFID tags. Uh, I did buy Carissa a couple new bottles. Ours are just getting a bit grungy with the uh, milk replacer. I got some ointment in case we do have any injured teats again. It's just like a teat. Why are you so bright? Like a teat ointment, just in case there's uh, some injured teats like last time on Mama Red. Uh, and then another thing of dextrose. I have a whole new bottle of calcium, plus calcium I have. I went to the vet clinic yesterday and got some stuff, so I think for the most part, we're pretty set. <laughs> You're getting out. That's good. She hates being drenched. No, no, you don't like it. Good swallowing. Good girl. I know. It's gross, I know. You're getting stronger. That's a good stuff. I know you hate that. Hi. Girl, that's a girl. girl. I thought I'd go through my comments from the last video, because I haven't done this in a while, and it always cheers me up when I'm feeling kind of blah. So I thank you guys for that. I, red. I read a lot of comments, you guys, but I like to share with you guys the ones that you like. So when you press the thumbs up on some of these comments, they go to the top for me. I can filter them, so top comments kind of comes to the top. Uh, perfectly Imperfect 23. Not gonna lie, I'm in love with the with the bottle baby, Sister Bear, she's so sweet, and I love how excited yeah, she are. gets when she sees you. Also can't believe how big Red already is. I know, she, so is, she is big, and she's so friggin' cute. 
Um, yeah, there's lots of people that love the bottle, baby. That's awesome. Next one is from Carrie Swain. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, everyone. Yeah, thank you for saying, I never say that. Prayers to all affected by everything going on t in the Ukraine. And I thank you for that comment. And I think on Saturday, well, since Saturday, I mean, Mark and I, this is all we talk about when we sit down at lunch every day. Breakfast, we do Wordle to just escape from the word, just to escape from the world. But at lunchtime, we sit down, he goes through Twitter and just gives me any updates on what goes on in the Ukraine. I never know who to follow because I'm really, really scared of propaganda. So uh, I leave it up to him to to kind of keep me updated, but I'm just, I'm so unbelievably sad. Sure enough, my battery died. Um, yes, Ukraine, uh, my prayers, my heart, my thoughts go out to, to you and to everyone this whole thing is affecting. I think it's sitting heavy on all of us and uh, I just wish we could do a little more for those affected. So yes, if we can pray, let's do that. This one is from Paula Thomas. Yesterday, Kim from Affordably Crafty was near tears when she showed off her Billy's mom and Billy yarn. She talked about you, the sheep, and how she knows exactly where this beautiful yarn is from and made with love. I made my yarn from the December release into a hat. It is lovely. Thank you for sharing your life with us. That's so awesome. Yeah, affordably crafty. I think maybe she has a, I think she said she had a YouTube channel and I did see that on Instagram and I did reply. So that makes me unbelievably happy and proud. Funny, we're talking about wool because uh, yesterday I got a sneak peek at the Easter blend that's coming your way and it's, I keep telling uh, I keep telling Karen and the girls at Mariposa, I'm like, she's so beautiful. So be excited for that. I'm super excited for that. It's coming. There's a thousand comments on this. You guys are amazing. I keep meaning to do this and the videos end up being so long that I can't, I can't get at it. Oh, that's so nice. You guys are so unbelievably sweet. And I think the biggest thing that I'm noticing, basically since Christmas, since I started doing this and, um, talking to you guys here was just the community we have here and I love looking at the threads you guys have to each other they're very very positive and I'm so so grateful for you all Good morning from the uh, workout room, aka sick pen. We made it about five laps this morning. So she by far is the weakest. Today is the first day I didn't treat my brown face, 2.9. I didn't treat her this morning with calcium. I did give her glycol. So she seems to be kind of on the mend. I will revisit calcium if she goes down again, but this one definitely 
just trying to keep on her and keep her moving around. She's bright, but uh, still not a great crazy appetite, which kind of bothers me. She's been nibbling at the hay and drinking water, so that's something, but all right, short time. Well, I have not wanted to do this but uh i have waited i think long enough for that weaker mama the 3.8 and i think today i am actually going to pull the trigger and induce her so i have some dexamethasone now um these lambs it will take because she's not ready she's really not ready to have babies uh it's going to take 50 hours it usually takes 48 to 50 hours uh, before I see lambs on a ewe that's not close, like not gonna have it naturally. So uh, that'll work out fine. That'll be Saturday, shortly after lunch, we should uh, have some lambs here. So I've wanted to wait as long as I could to uh, make sure those lambs are somewhat viable, but uh, they probably won't be. So we can't get too excited here if we see lambs on Saturday. The last few lambings have been, I've had tough starts and I'm gonna tell you right now when uh, when it starts out really bumpy, it's it just makes lambing a little tougher at the start. It's nice when lambing goes smoothly, and I can't remember the last time I had a real smooth uh, start, I guess you could say. But we're learning lots. Uh, if anything, this career path has taught me to stay humble and to stay open-minded and to never think I have everything figured out because I certainly don't. I did get uh, all four mamas up just now. Really the reason why I pulled the trigger on this one is she went about two laps and she fell down three times and she just hasn't been eating. So no matter what we're, I mean, we're keeping her going. Yesterday seemed a bit better. She was nibbling at the hay and drinking water, but today I haven't seen her do either. Those babies have to go and uh, we'll see if we can get her back on her feet. Oh no, 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 please mom. Oh no, honey, how long have you been down? Not you. Come on, girl. Oh, honey, are you okay? Oh, you okay? Just stay. Shh, shh, shh. Sit, 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 sit. Sit, honey, sit. Sit, honey. Get your breath. How long have you been down? Just stay here. Just catch your breath. <sighs> yeah, get the gases out. Oh boy. Not good. Again. No. You okay? It's a close call. So she's okay. Leave her alone, ladies. Well, so she walked from back there up to here. She okay? I think she's gonna be all right. Hi, right, gorgeous. Are you missing Carissa? You're being pretty sweet to me. Hi. 